Hello, I'm Professor Matthew Rotella, and in this tutorial, I'm going to go over uh, render passes and AOVs and how to use them in Photoshop. I uh, I already did a render passes and AOVs tutorial, but in this one, I'm going to show you how to set up a few more uh, render passes and AOVs, and also I'm going to demonstrate a couple extra uh, skills in Photoshop. Uh, specifically with uh, your normals and uh, yeah um, and, and with some of your other things as well but uh, yeah so, so let's get started basically uh, what I have here a pretty simple setup uh, the reason I have just a single light is because it's gonna make some of the AOVs uh, much more obvious to see what they're doing uh, with one another which uh, I'm gonna up my light samples a little bit uh, so there's a little less noise in the render, but regardless, uh, basically what goes on is this. So yeah, like I got my objects, they're rendering like this, and anytime that uh, Maya does uh, your beauty render, your RGBA final render of your objects, it's doing calculations for all sorts of things. It does individual calculations for... Uh, your diffuse, for your specular, all the different aspects of your shader it's doing a calculation for. And uh, by default you'll just see the final result, And uh, but we can get these uh, individual components of our render uh, individually and use them to more, fine, uh, more finely tune the look of uh, what we're going for. So, yeah, without further ado, let's uh, Let's uh, yeah, the, the, let's set up our render passes and AOVs. Which to start, let's just uh, get all the default ones that we're gonna want uh, in here. Which to get to your AOVs, you just go to your AOVs tab uh, in your render settings, which is this little clapboard with a gear. Or yeah, which I think yeah uh, yeah, so I can turn on there. Or you can go to Windows rendering editors. Uh, render settings and it's the yeah same thing but yeah here in your AOVs uh, first off what we're going to want to set up is our normals uh, so that's N uh, now uh, you may not have a uh, coat component uh, in uh, your setup but I have a clear coat on my table because it's like finished wood and I have a clear coat on my mug because uh, glazed ceramics have a clear coat so I'm going to have a coat component, but if you don't have that as part of your surface shader, then you're not going to have coat as one of your passes. But I'm definitely going to want, and you're definitely going to want, your uh, diffuse pass, no matter what. Uh, now I'm going to do a few things here. So uh, I'm going to get all of these diffuse passes. Uh, basically, your diffuse pass is uh, your general diffuse then diffuse albedo is going to be your textures without any shading whatsoever. It's just going to be your flat textures displayed. Uh, diffuse direct is going to be, uh, and then your diffuse direct and indirect are the two passes that make up your just standard diffuse pass. So you don't necessarily need the combined one if you have them individually, but uh, for the sake of, uh, but I, sometimes I like to ha make sure I have one that's compact, and if I want to get more uh, specific, then I have the individual passes. And then for my specular, I'm going to want specular, and then direct and indirect. I don't really need the albedo for the specular. So that's going to be all of uh, the uh, all of the default passes that I'm going to want to have set up there. And now, when I hit render, which you're going to want to make sure, you know, in this case, I'm in the Arnold render view. And if you don't see the drop down of AOVs, you can turn it on in a window uh, toolbar icon, show, uh, show cameras, or no, I mean, show AOVs list. But anyway, I'm going to render from my camera. And. Is hassling me. That's okay. I'll just go to. Uh, I made a duplicate of my perspective camera, and that's why it's acting funky there. But regardless, uh, 
now as it renders, instead of just having my beauty pass in this drop down, I have all of my passes. So I can see my normals for my object, which you know includes my bump mapping on my table. Uh, I can see what part of my render is being distributed into my clear coat. Uh, my diffuse, you can see I don't have any of my specular highlights. It's just the diffuse color underneath. And it, uh, this is my direct diffuse. So this is just uh, the color that's coming purely from my textures combined with my light hit uh, to illuminate them. And then, uh, yeah, or rather, uh, my diffuse direct is that um, the color just from my light hit uh, and uh, from my textures. And then my diffuse indirect is the color that my objects are inheriting from each other, from being in proximity to each other, which is most obvious on the mug. Uh, because it's inheriting a lot of the brown and like yellow tones uh, from the table and the can. Uh, so this is like my reflections, so to speak. And then similar, this is my specular. Again, this is my specular combined. Then there's my specular direct. This is just that first specular calculation, that first direct light hit from my light. And then my indirect specular, which is all of my... Uh, all of my reflections again basically uh, my uh, colors and that my objects are inheriting from one another uh, okay so yeah that's going to be our base AOVs that uh, we can use to fine-tune individual parts of things but before I do that I'm going to make a few more super useful AOVs basically uh, so First of all, I'm going to make a mat ID AOV, uh, which, oh, uh, which before I do that, I should mention that any of these AOVs, you just uh, make them active or inactive using these arrows at the bottom. You can just toss them back and forth. And also, uh, I'm going to be working in Photoshop, which by default doesn't uh, facilitate multi-layer EXRs. But if you have something that does, uh, you can hit merge AOVs, or at least last I checked, Photoshop doesn't facilitate those EXRs. Maybe uh, we live in new times, but regardless, I'm going to act as if it doesn't. Uh, so I want to make sure that merge AOVs isn't checked in my case. But if you're working at something like Nuke that can easily shuffle out your passes, you can hit merge AOVs and just save one file. But you'll see what ends up happening here. In any case, I'm going to make the uh, mat ID AOV of which I'm going to add as a custom AOV. So, AOV name, add custom. I'll just call it ID1. And I know uh, that I think my mug? Is it my, uh, well, basically if I go into my shader attributes here in my hypershade and scroll down to AOVs, there's an AOV section, and this is where I can add in all of my extra custom AOVs, and I think it's my it's my wood, which I'll rename this. My wood texture already has uh, one set up, and I can see it's mapped into my red channel. And I'm going to do the same thing for my mug, but I'm going to map each of these into one of the three RGB channels for simplicity's sake. And you'll see why when I get into Photoshop. Uh, but I'll make my mug in the green channel, which again, I'm going to type ID1 into here. It's going to be green. And I want my TCAN ID1. This is going to be blue. And same thing for the lid of the TCAN ID1. Blue. And uh, all right. That should be all of them. Now, since I have this ID1 uh, custom AOV that I made, if I were to do a re-render even without letting it finish, you can see I have an ID1 AOV now, and um, uh, I have my table mapped into my, my red channel, my mug mapped into my green channel, and my TCAN mapped into my blue channel of my uh, of my mat ID 
and this is going to be very useful for generating quick clipping masks in Photoshop. Uh, but moving along, I'm also going to set up an ambient occlusion AOV, uh, and I am also going to uh, set up a wireframe AOV. So to set up both of them, it's a little more complicated. Uh, to start, I'll just make sure that I have both AOVs here in my active AOVs list. So I'll make AO for ambient occlusion, create, and I'll do add custom uh, wireframe, make sure I spell this right, uh, and add a wireframe AOV as well. So I have them in my list, but you know, by default, they're not gonna have anything in them, even though uh, they're just gonna be black because uh, I don't have anything that's defining them, so like, yeah, you get it. So, what I need to do is I need to make shaders for each of these, which Arnold has an ambient occlusion shader, and I need to hook this uh, output, this out color from my ambient occlusion shader into the correct AOV for each of these, which in this case is going to be the uh, AOV2 for all of them. So I'll do wireframe, which it's really good to keep these organized if you're working with a lot of object. I'll just copy and paste wireframe into the AOV2 for all of these. And boop, boop, okay. Which I started with ambient occlusion and then AOV3, I'll make my ambient occlusion. Uh, so type AO, which I'm just going to copy and paste into that third AOV slot for each of my relevant shaders. And all right, so now I need to get my connection editor and connect the out color. Uh, from my ambient inclusion shader to that AOV3 slot for each of my uh, for each of my shaders. So it's under Windows, General Editors, Connection Editor. Uh, so uh, to load my ambient inclusion shader into uh, the left side because it goes from left to right, outputs to inputs. So reload left and now I got my ambient occlusion shader and then I will want to uh, proceed to reload the right for each of my shaders individually so I'll go out color from my ambient occlusion to ID3 which again is my ambient occlusion you can see I put that color in there and reload right ID3 Select, reload right, ID3, select, reload right, ID3. So I hooked up my ambient occlusion into the correct AOV for each of my shaders. And now I'm going to do the same thing with uh, Arnold's wireframe shader. So uh, that's this guy, AI wireframe, uh, which let's just clean this up. Uh, which I'll change my edge my edge type to polygons because I uh, I modeled in polygons so I want to see that in polygons as or uh, or quads as opposed to triangles and line color of black and fill color of white uh, will work out perfectly that's just fine and so now I want to select wireframe reload the left again out color and then. Uh, I'll just go left or right to make sure I do this right. And then it's going to be ID2, reload right, ID2. And you can see once again that color being put into there. Uh, mug, reload right, ID2, wood, reload right, ID2. Okay, so now I should see the wireframe and the ambient occlusion for all of them in my wireframe and ambient occlusion passes. So I'm done with my connection editor. 
Uh, don't need anything else with my hypershade. So I should have what I need here. So if I refresh the render, and now if I go to my ambient occlusion shader, you can see I have that ambient occlusion pass. And you can similarly see uh, if I go down to my wireframe pass that I have a wireframe pass for all of my objects. So let me see, I'll cancel this render for now. And uh, But now, how do we get this out of Maya? Uh, we can save these out one at a time by going to File, uh, Save Image, and uh, save, yeah, save out my passes one pass at a time, but I would rather uh, Maya do that work for me. So first of all, I'm going to go back into my render settings. Uh, I'm going to name this. So I'll call this like render passes demo and uh, uh, yeah, and I'm going to switch this to HD. 1080 because I want to render an HD for this and then lastly what I have to do is um, uh, if I go to uh, well uh, lastly I just need to render the image but if I go to my images folder uh, which this should be yeah, I'm in the default project so if I go to my images folder uh, when I hit render, you'll see that it will create a uh, it will create a folder with an EXR for each of my render passes. So to render, I'm going to go to rendering, and then uh, render, and then if you can, batch render is better. But I've been having issues with watermarks with batch rendering in my educational version. Uh, so, in order to avoid that, I'll hit render sequence, which I don't have any sequence rendering uh, attributes set up. So even though it is render sequence, uh, you can see it says render sequence and it just says current frame. It's not going to render any sequence, uh, but we're going to need to use this in order for it to uh, do what we want it to do. So I'll hit render sequence and close, at which point it will begin rendering. And... Then here in my images folder, it has created a folder called camera one. So it created a folder for the camera that it's uh, rendering from. And then you can see it has a uh, folder for each individual render pass that, I, uh, that I'm going to be working with in Photoshop where it's putting an EXR for all of them. And, okay, uh, so that should be that for now, so uh, I'm going to pause the recording for a second while this finishes, shouldn't take too long, but I'll still pause it, and then uh, we'll be back and we'll hop into Photoshop. Okay, so here I am back, I have my render fully uh, rendered, that's uh, here, and here in my... Uh, yeah, and here in File Explorer, yeah, you can see I, like I said before, got all my files all lined up here. So let's get into this. Uh, let's create a new thing here. It's going to be 1920 by 1080. And RGB color, I'll make it 16-bit. All these EXRs should be 32-bit, so like you can work in 32-bit, but I'll at least give it a little extra bit depth there. And background content, it's white, and it doesn't matter. Whatever, I'll hit create. All right, so let's start throwing our things in here. <sighs> so we got our 
beauty pack. You know what? Uh, I haven't tried doing this before, but uh, don't judge me. I'm going to try doing it. What if I just... Bam. No. Oh, goodness. Look at what I've done. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that's okay. I'll open all this up. Let's get my... Do my beauty pass at the bottom. Uh, and let's sort of bring things in as I need them, so to speak. But, um... Uh, I just have this in here as sort of reference. What we're effectively going to do is we're going to build this image from the ground up. Uh, so uh, that means that we're going to have our uh, uh, we're going to have our diffuse direct at the bottom, and then on top of our diffuse direct, we're going to have our, you know, I'm going to put this on my other monitor and I'll just be announcing what I'm doing. And then on top of our diffuse direct, we're going to have our diffuse indirect. And then uh, to properly blend this, we simply need to make it a linear dodge add. Uh, because basically, since Arnold is a physically based rendering engine, all of your things are adding up to like a, a weight of one uh, across your different aspects of your shader. So, uh, uh, so uh, if I do linear dodge add, uh, that add math makes sense in order to get us all the way to our uh, eventual beauty pass. And you'll see how that functions. But yeah, anyway, on top of our diffuses, we're going to have our specular direct, which again, linear dodge add. And then you can see that highlight getting put in there. Specular and direct. Bring that guy in. Linear dodge add. And next up would be the clear coat on top of all that, which I didn't do a direct and indirect for. It's just my coat, but linear dodge add. And now it's just my my ambient occlusion, my wireframe, and my uh, ID pass, which these are more like utility shaders. Uh, so I suppose, you know what, first I'll just group all of these. Oh, not my beauty pass. Group all these, control G, call this passes. And it definitely helps to name these. Like, I could call this like DD for diffuse direct, DI, diffuse indirect, uh, SD, specular direct, SI, specular indirect, and C for coat. Okay. Uh, and you can see if I now turn on my beauty pass uh, underneath, like as I switch between the two, well, uh, you can see there's some weights that can be adjusted, but uh, they have all the same components, more or less. Certain things are getting a little bit bright, but uh, yeah. Anyway, let's continue. See, I got all my passes for my objects, and yeah, now I want to bring in my utility passes, so I brought in my ambient occlusion. Let's bring in my normals, and let's bring in my wireframe. Okie dokie. Yeah, so uh, now I'll go over working with each of these. Wireframe is definitely the most straightforward, so I might as well just uh, go over this one first. Although I will say you're going to want your ID pass to be at the top, and I'll go over why in a sec. Uh, this should be my wireframe, WF, and then this is my AO pass. Okay. Uh, Alright. So my wireframe. Uh, basically, 
the whole point of this is just so that you can put, uh, put your wireframe over top of your objects in post and make it look very clean. Like you might be able to think that you can uh, just put your wireframe on by like uh, putting like a UV snapshot on top of your diffuse map or something like that. You can do that, but your, uh, your wireframe isn't going to look very clean at all. Uh, it's, uh, the, your, your line widths are going to vary dramatically and there's, it's, it can be messy. But with wireframe, which, you know, the uh, fill color is white and the uh, black color is, on uh, well, the dark color is black, meaning that if you set it to multiply, the white part is going to multiply one uh, because white has a value of one. So that means that all of those pixels where there's white will be unchanged and black has a value of zero uh, and anything multiplied by zero is zero, meaning all of those uh, pixels will turn black. So uh, so the multiply math uh, works, uh, makes perfect sense and you can just turn your wireframe on and off and uh, a lot of times when you're making a portfolio, being able to have a render with and without a wireframe is extraordinarily handy and uh, yeah <laughs> uh, and I mean you, you can also use this as a clipping mask if, if you so desire and uh, you can chain it turn it all sorts of colors if I uh, that will help you make it stand out more but okay so that's that which uh, similarly, uh, with your ambient occlusion pass, one potential application of it could just be setting this to multiply as well, and that will just make all of your nooks and crannies appear shadowed, but that's not physically accurate, so if you want to have a photorealistic uh, render, uh, then your ambient occlusion isn't necessarily going to give you photorealistic results. Uh, but, uh, so I usually use the ambient occlusion as more of a, a clipping mask, but, uh, we can go over that in a second. Anyway, so, basically, um, uh, what render passes allow us to do is they allow us to go in and, uh, make really, uh, fine-tuned adjustments uh, to all of our uh, 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 to all the different aspects of our shader like uh, for example you know now that we have our specular uh, broken out into its own thing if we wanted to you know make an adjustment to our uh, specular level and just increase the brightness of our highlights uh, without increasing the brightness of uh, uh, like our textures, like we can do that. Uh, similarly, if um, like if I wanted to get this pass that more or less contains uh, a decent portion of my reflections from one object to another, I could make a duplicate. Uh, let's break this out up here. Let's set this back to normal. Um, and now I could uh, control C, and now I could make a copy of my uh, specular indirect pass, and I can make a clipping mask. Alt click into that clipping mask, and hit uh, Shift Control V to paste in place into my clipping mask. And with that being done. Uh, I can just paint things, uh, or, or uh, not necessarily paint things, but put any sort of imagery uh, directly into just my specular, uh, my indirect specular, and I could tint my uh, my reflections that sort of way. Which I'll just make this. Eh, which I'll just fill it with the color. Alt delete, and then I can tilt just, uh, yeah, like I said, tint my reflections uh, specifically in my specular indirect, uh, or add details specifically into my reflections, which, if I want them to come through more, which uh, 
So like if I were to switch this back to like that grunge brush I had and uh, I don't know what sort of grunge would look like this. We'll just add like some sort of black dirt and, and which on it first. Uh, Alt delete. Yeah, which if I want, or rather, you know what, th this would make, yeah. And if I wanted to add any sort of detail into my reflection, which I can go ahead and adjustments, levels, oh, pardon me. And levels and I could bring down my white point to more aggressively target the mask and then there I can sort of you know affect just that part of uh, of my objects without it uh, coming into other parts of my render it's just affecting the the parts of my uh, my render that have reflections. Now, obviously, that's not uh, this right here isn't the goal that we're trying to uh, accomplish here. But you can at least get the idea of the power, the functionality that you have in your hands here. Similarly, uh, let's say we want to uh, tint like just this uh, tea can. We just want to tint that uh, to be more uh, just some sort of color. We, we want it to, to tint the uh, the can to be more yellow as, a po as opposed to more orange. So uh, what we can do is we can turn on our ID pass, which this is my normals pass. I guess I, uh, my ID pass I didn't bring in it would seem. My ID pass would be this guy, alpha channel. And, all right, which, yeah, you'll want your ID pass to be at the top. And that's because uh, here in your channels uh, is where you can go ahead and select individual parts uh, where like I, if I look at just my blue channel, I'll see just my T can. And again, I can use this as a clipping mask. And um, and then you always want this to be at the top. That way you can easily turn it on or off. And that way you can uh, get it. Yeah, just easily access it right here in your channels tab. So yeah, I'll do just that. I'll look at my blue channel. And I'll uh, copy it. Control A, Control C. Turn all my channels back on. And then... I'll make a new layer, I'll make, which I already did with layer two. I'll make a clipping mask on it. I'll click into that clipping mask, shift control V into it. And now I have something that I can use to uh, target uh, just my T-can, uh, which, uh, you know, could go anywhere from, uh, you know, like if I want to paint uh, more uh, uh, more grunge on part of it like I can just paint and it will be clipped to my my tea can but like I said in this case we actually want to do an adjustment layer where we can sort of tint things and I'll just do hue saturation then in the uh, mask for the, the, the hue saturation, well, you know, I'll click into there, shift control V, uh, place that into there. And then that way I can adjust the hue of just my T-cam, which like I said, you know, we let's say we want it to be more, uh, a little more yellow tinted as opposed to the orange. Uh, we can adjust that hue we can adjust our saturation to be one way or the other. We can darken it if we feel it should be darker. 
same thing in the other direction, so on and so forth. Uh, and the same goes for all of our various uh, our various objects here. So the the ID mat, which you can combine this with your uh, with your other sort of effects, uh, where uh, let's say like you get like just the specular indirect, and then you want to adjust just the specular indirect for um, uh, for like the can or the mug. Uh, you can use these masks to uh, to help you with that, and then like the same thing goes for like I said uh, with uh, the ambient occlusion. Like if you want to use that as a clipping mask, uh, like if I do so, uh, so Control A, Control C, uh, hide this again, Alt click, Shift Control V, put that into my clipping mask. Uh, go back out here, and then, yeah, if I want, like, all of my nooks and crannies to have some sort of, uh, like, dirt in them for some reason, uh, or if I, uh, like, I can just go, well, just as a quick, uh, thing, which, I mean, I could, you know, paint it, of course, uh, oh, which in this case... I, uh, I forgot one very important thing, which is I want to do this. I want to invert this. So, uh, whoop, cancel. Uh, because right now, uh, with it as is, it's uh, targeting all of the white spaces, of course, and then the dark spaces aren't being targeted where I want it to be the opposite. Uh, so I want to hit Control I and invert it, and this will give me the result that I want, where I'm able to uh, paint the grunge just in the sort of places in between places, and I can't paint it anywhere outside of that. Uh, so, uh, very handy. Uh, obviously, it's not conforming to the shape of my object, but the application is still there. Uh, which in this case, if I even just fill it with black, I can use it to a similar extent that I was using it before. But we don't need to go into that any further. It has its uses, and uh, you can use them. Uh, but yeah, basically just each part of this, which again, uh, like if you, uh, like if I want my clear coat to come through, uh, or if I want it to come through less, I can always just come in here and like I could up the brightness or take it down and you know in this case if I make it go all the way away then my clear coat is more or less disappearing from my scenario but I can bring it through more clearly if I want those reflections into the coat to really shine through and being able to make all these like fine-tuned uh, adjustments uh, to your image is uh, super handy and using the uh, the normals pass uh, we can even do some uh, basic. Uh, we can even do some basic relights uh, to our uh, uh, to, to our uh, situation here. So basically, this is how it's going to work. Uh, I'm going to get a levels adjustment, and uh, to sort of separate my RGB channels even further. I can uh, move the midtone slider up or I can move it down and you can see how my normals come through to different degrees uh, depending on <clears throat> which direction I uh, move the slider. But then after this we're going to do uh, uh, like an HSL and then after this we're going to do a channel mixer. We're going to change this to monochrome and then we're going to do one more uh, HSL on top of this. So basically the the channel mixer uh, determines what uh, what channels will receive light and how much and then this first hue saturation that we made at the bottom, uh, as I 
go through this, uh, you'll see that the different tones basically determine which direction the lighting is coming from. And then this one at the top is mainly just so that we can colorize the light and we can give it a tint if need be. But if you don't want to, you can sort of ignore this guy at the very top. Uh, and like, let's say I want to add more lighting specifically to one side of my objects, but let's say I don't want to add a whole lot of light to the table, like here. I can adjust my green and Yeah, I'll do something like this. And again, you can see how the levels will bring out different aspects of the lighting, uh, which uh, you can get really uh, specific or you can get really broad. Uh, but basically, whenever you get a result that you're happy with, uh, which I'll do this on a duplicate, of my normals, but you can collapse these all down and I'll hit merge layers and you know, I can name this relight and I could set this to screen and or you know some whatever works for you I could set it to soft light screen will work more directly I'd say but screen and then if I just take the opacity down then uh, I can have it be a little more subtle to say the least and uh, but yeah and you can see how that sort of conforms to the shape of your model and so on so uh, certainly a powerful tool and uh, I think that's everything. I think it gives you a rather comprehensive idea of how you can use all of these to fine tune and tweak different parts of your model here in Photoshop using uh, your passes. And you can add details, uh, or at the very least, you can just, uh, even if you don't add details, uh, just the power to be able to individually edit uh, how like each object looks can not only save you re-renders, because let's say like the the thing I did with the uh, with the tint like that uh, being able to specifically target this object uh, without uh, the, the ID pass uh, but it, even just something as simple as that with the tint would require like all sorts of roto work if this was an animation uh, and it just like takes all that headache out of it and it can totally save you from re-rendering so uh, and if you're in a more powerful program like Nuke, then these render passes only become more powerful. Uh, where in Nuke, you can uh, like retexture things really easily uh, in post. You can relight things really easily in post, uh, and uh, do all sorts of things. But even here in Photoshop, your passes give you a ton of control over how your renders look, and you should definitely be taking advantage of them. All right. That's everything. Uh, thank you very much, and have a nice night, evening, day, week, life, what have you. Hope that helped. Goodbye.